Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we will dive into creating a simple drag down system in Godot, similar to what you would find in an inventory system. This system will allow objects to snap into designated areas when dragged and return to their original position if dropped outside. And you know the best part? You can customize it in any way you like. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. First, create an empty scene, add a static body 2D as a root node along with collision shape 2D and a color rect as a children. Then set the color rect size to 128 by 128 and its position to negative 64 in X and Y. These components create the designated spot for our object to snap into. And we are using static body 2D for this demo. You can choose other body type as well like rigid body or character body but it is important to use any physics body otherwise the draggable object will not be able to detect it. Also make sure to assign the droppable group to this scene. Now we only want this to be visible when we start dragging and to control that we will use a global script also known as autoload to track whether we are currently dragging something or not. So in this script we will define an is dragging variable to track the drag state. Now let's create a script for our droppable area. In the ready function we set a visual effect making the area semi transparent when an object is not inside it. And the process function ensures the area is only visible when we are dragging something. So moving on, we will now create an object that we can drag. We will use Node2D as a root which contains a sprite, an area2D and a collision shape. The area2D will help us to detect when the mouse interacts with the object and when we entered any droppable area. So that's why we will attach both mouse entered and body entered signal to our script. In our draggable object script, we will handle everything related to moving and interacting with our objects. We'll start by defining several variables. First one is draggable to keep track of whether the object can be dragged. This ensures we don't move it when the player is dragging somewhere else. Then we have is inside droppable which will help us to know if the object is currently inside the droppable area. This body reference variable is to hold a reference of the droppable area when the object enters it. Now first thing first, as soon as our mouse enters inside our object, we will make sure if we are not dragging anything else, then we set the draggable to true and also for some feedback effect, I am scaling the sprite just a little bit. Similarly, when our mouse leaves the object, we will reset the draggable to false and bring scaling back to normal. And now it's looking pretty good. After that, we will work on the body in dot function which will be triggered when any droppable area enters the object. So after confirming the entered body is a droppable area, we set the is droppable to true. Then we change the color of that body to Rebecca purple with opacity 1. And finally, we will store this body in a body reference variable that we created. Similarly, when the body has exited, we will reset the is droppable to false and reset the color to medium purple again with opacity 0.7. So with these two functions, our droppable area changes color when we are inside it. And with that done, the only thing left is to write the process function to handle the drag. So inside it, we first check if draggable is true because we don't want to do unnecessary calculation. After that, we look for when user has pressed the left mouse button. Then we can simply set the object position to our mouse position. But when you do that, you will see I'm able to drag the object, but while grabbing it, it is snapped to the cursor, but I want the object to maintain its position relative to cursor. So that's why we have to create one more variable offset. And in the is action just pressed, we can store the offset by subtracting our position from mouse position. Also, this is where we set the is draggable to true, which we have created in the autoload script. Now, after getting the offset, we can simply subtract it from our mouse position. And after doing that, you will notice it maintains its position and I can now move it easily. Then comes the final part when we release the mouse button. Now, if we release the mouse button outside the area, the object should return to its original position. Whereas, if we release it inside the droppable area, I want the object to snap to it. So, in the is action just released, we first set the is dragging to false. Then for moving the object, I will create a twin. And then if we are inside the droppable area, I want to set the object's position equal to droppable area. So here we want to animate ourselves. We want to change its position property. The final position is going to be the position of the droppable area. 
and lastly we want it to complete the animation in 0.2 second i will also set the easing with ease out now if we release the mouse button outside the droppable area we want to return back and for that we need to store our initial position so in order to do that i will create an initial position variable and when we are pressing the mouse button we will store that current position and now in the else part everything is going to be similar as above here we just need to replace the body position with our initial position and that's it to use this create an empty scene add draggable object and droppable areas and your game is ready to go so there you have it you can use this system as a foundation for more complex game mechanics such as an inventory system or interactive puzzles i hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more exciting godot tutorials if you have any question or suggestion for future videos please leave them in the comment section below so till then thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video